From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. A production of iHeartRadio. Hello. Welcome back to the show. My name is Matt. My name is Noel. They call me Ben. We're joined, as always, with our super producer, Alexis, codenamed Doc Holiday Jackson. Most importantly, you are you, you are here, and that makes this stuff they don't want you to know. It's the top of the week, which means it is time for some strange news. We're learning more about the animals we share the world with in a very interesting way. Uh, we're learning more about corruption in law enforcement and perhaps a case you may not have heard of uh, this is one that Matt said will terrify people with a significant other and uh, we have a breaking report as we record today about a um, a would-be active super villainy that is very plausible and <laughs> it came very close to uh, killing people and that's where we're starting <laughs> Okay, yes. All right. <laughs> Very well then, gentlemen. Uh, so you may or may not be familiar with the town of Oldsmar, Florida. It's not super big. It has a population of 13,591. It is, if you look at it on a map, it's part of Pinellas County, which is face, It's on the Gulf side of Mexico side of Florida. So if you're looking at the map, it's on the left. Uh, it's, it's not panhandle country. Uh, it's, it's kind of in the scoop out of the Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, right over there by Clearwater and mm -hmm. uh, St. Petersburg. Shout out Scientology. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't believe Scientology is involved with the story you are about to hear today. But again, this is fresh baked news. Uh, this town is, uh, like many towns in the U.S., it has infrastructure, right? It has traffic lights, it has sewage, it has electricity, it also has water treatment, waste treatment. Uh, anybody who has looked into con conspiracy theories about fluoride and what exactly goes into your local tap water uh, is aware that water treatment plants are one of those they're one of those boring things to protect. You know what I mean? Like uh, no one, everybody wants to save uh, the the beautiful building or the historic monument. But the whales. The whales, yeah. Or the fuzzy uh, big-eyed mammals. But no one wants to, no one really wants to make a news story about just how vulnerable our wastewater and water treatment plants are. Here's what happened. Someone remotely accessed the city's water treatment system very recently in Oldsmar, Florida. And they, just through this hack, just through this exploit, they were able to increase the amount of sodium hydroxide by a factor of more than 100 in, in the water system. Uh, sodium hydroxide is the fancy name for what we call lye. L-Y-E, lye is used in very small amounts to control the acidity of water, but it is also, you know, most recognizable to a lot of us as an ingredient in household cleaning supplies. It's also a product many true crime fan buffs out there might recognize as being used when disposing of bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the day when it was way easier to get rid of a body, <laughs> I'm telling you guys. But the the point of this is, the point of this is, that uh, if you want to picture it in simplified terms, perhaps oversimplified, someone without ever physically entering this treatment system, someone was able to pour drain cleaner into the town. So they made it such that people were possibly drinking possibly drinking drain cleaner from a faucet. And then, of course, if there's a refrigerator that makes ice cubes automatically, that's, a, that's another factor that plays in. Why are we being somewhat glib and cheerful describing this? Well, in this case, this one time, it turns out that they were able to prevent this disaster from occurring. This, like, supervillain 
Breaking Bad level plausible scheme. Uh, the city's water supply was thankfully not affected because there was a supervisor at the water treatment plant who, like many of us these days, was working remotely, working from home. And picture this guy. He's just got his computer screen up, right? He's looking at water levels and uh, the picture whatever metrics you want to picture here. Uh, let's go early 2000s hacker movie, and let's just say there's a screen that cartoonishly explains what's going on because they can't do exposition, VO, or whatever. It's not the right part of the story. This guy is looking at the screen, and he sees the sodium hydroxide level just sort of and he goes, oh, dang. Good thing I don't have to put my pants on and go over there. Delete. Uh, city officials today said that they had instituted several safeguards after this. Uh, they want to, going forward, have a system to prevent any water that could have been contaminated from reaching the public. And they also hopefully will be a, a little more mindful of how people are able to access their system. At this point, nobody has been arrested. There are some leads. No one knows why Old Smar, Florida was targeted in this attack. And other infrastructure hubs are on the lookout in Pinellas and in adjacent counties. It's weird because the uh, authorities are saying that even if they hadn't caught this, it would have taken more than a day, more than 24 hours for this water that was being processed with lye to enter the water supply. This story is interesting. We don't have we don't have all the details yet because it literally was happening today before we recorded. Uh, if it, if the lie did enter the water supply in this concentration. It could cause massive damage to people's skin. It could cause hair loss. This is according to the National Center of Biotechnology Information. Most importantly, folks, ingestion of this stuff, as we know from crimes of previous decades, ingestion of this stuff can be fatal. It eats bodies. This got me thinking. I wanted to share this story with you guys. This got me thinking about the bigger picture. Like um, years ago on car stuff, I learned that it is terrifyingly easy for someone to hack into your local municipality's traffic light system. Like, it's stupid easy. It's weird that it doesn't happen more often. But what do you guys think about this story? Like, do you, what's your opinion on the water supply in general? We're very lucky in this country to be able to drink directly from a faucet in most places outside of Flint, Michigan. I, I agree. I, I will say this, though. Like, my daughter refuses to drink tap water. Um, I think the tap water in my house tastes pretty good, but she is convinced that it is poisonous. Mm. Mm. Well, we know, we know that there's a certain level of allowable stuff in any water system we do. because it's nearly impossible to remove it at scale, like remove everything completely at scale. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps one of the reasons why, what would you, what would you call those? Uh, like at the tap filtration mm -hmm. at the refrigerator mm -hmm. level, well, like a the, Brita filter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brita filter or even uh, becoming very popular now are filters that you actually put on your house, like underneath your house that sure. adds an extra level of filtration to all water coming into your home. Mm -hmm. um, it makes sense, I think. I have, a, I have a cousin who she's got like an eight level filtration system for all of her water that's that's considered potable that she will drink and mm -hmm. she and her husband. And it's it's incredible and intricate and the water tastes fine uh, when it comes through the system. It tastes very similar to me. To, to other water produced in her area, but it's, you know, there's a level of anxiety about it. I think because we kind of all know now that, that <laughs> fact that there's going to be some stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Matt. Uh, the thing about most retail filters or many retail filters, and we're not selling these here. Uh, the, the thing about most of those is that they do not filter out heavy metals, right? Even if you are, even if you are someone who has a life straw, it's a tremendous device. Even if you're someone who has a life straw in your go bag or something like that, that will allow you to drink from still water 
and it will kill many biological contaminants. But even with the top-notch water treatment of Europe or the U.S., etc., what you'll see is that the water post-treatment still contains things like aluminum or copper, iron, lead, pesticides, sometimes uranium for that tang. And, and mm-hmm. these contaminants all compose dangerous side effects, but people working in water treatment uh, are top-notch with the research on this, the allowable parts per million threshold. It's not something arbitrary, nor is it something made up out of thin air, like we've seen in, in our earlier show on Mead, Nebraska. I mean, w- would you consider this an act of domestic terrorism? Yes. Just like a really mean-spirited prank. Yes, it's an act of domestic terrorism, yeah. technically. Yeah, for sure. It is pretty astounding that these systems that you could control chemicals like that remotely, like they, they exist with with a some kind of VPN access or some kind of you know remote access built into them. That's that's kind of creepy. What, what positive factor does the lie have anyway? Why is there a lie? tap going into the water supply. Did I miss that? I mean, I can't imagine the filtration is like variable uh, or, or is it saying that like the hacker essentially uh, changed a parameter that allowed more lie to get through the filters or actually in, introduced more lie into the water supply? But what it seems to be is that they were able to do both. They were able to influence the constraints of the measurement, uh, which inherently allowed more lie into the system. Why they did it, we don't know. You know, uh, one of the easiest, lowest hanging fruits as far as a lead would go would be maybe a disgruntled employee, someone who had the knowledge of the thing. Uh, At this point, we don't know how much other stuff, if any, this hacker did, uh, but we do know, and I think it's instructive for all of us listening today, we do know that these systems, of course, because they are boring and necessary, they are not subject to a lot of scrutiny as much as they should be. Like, we have people focused on making sure the water is safe to drink. We don't have people focused on making sure the water system is secure, you know, like like uh, when we talk about fluoride in the water, we got into the weeds on how many parts per million uh, are, are allowed to exist, right, in your drinking water and why it's there. And people still have a problem with that. Luckily, I mean, it was a supervisor that caught this mm-hmm. on, on, a, on a, you know, whatever, like an interface if you're working remotely and was able to see the uh, parameter being changed. Uh, we, you did say this, Ben, at the very top, though, that there are small, small amounts of lye used to help reduce the acidity of water supply. So obviously they've got a supply of it somewhere that's being mm-hmm. fed in in the same way that like fluoride and other, you know, uh, mm-hmm. compounds that go in and, and help treat the water. Uh, but yeah, that's a nasty one, man. I can imagine if they just had succeeded and flooded the supply, people would have been like getting, you know, their, their esophagus is like corroded. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the good thing is what Ben, I think we talked, I don't know if you mentioned this, the, relative number of people that could have been affected there in Oldsmar. It was, a, it was set, I know it's a, a handful of, or, or many businesses, but then about 15,000 residents. Mm-hmm. So they're, the good thing is that they're kind of separated away with the Oldsmar water treatment facility to get their water. That's what was affected, not the larger Pinellas County uh, water systems. Right. And when I mentioned that supervisor at the top who caught this and prevented this disaster, um, you know, I, I hope you're listening, uh, sir or madam, whoever you are. Uh, I am sorry that we don't know your name yet, but in my book, you're a hero. And that's a hell of a thing to learn <laughs> at 8 a.m. in the morning. So, so like I was saying, you know, picture that remote access screen. Uh, one interesting note here is that Of course, if that person who works there is able to access this system remotely, then it follows that it is not impossible for a bad actor to access this. And think about if someone is motivated enough, think about how easy it is to set something up such that you never see a red light again. It's all green lights when you're driving. Think about how easy it is to shut down parts of an electric grid right? Electricity grid. Uh, We need to be aware of this stuff. 
And not to be super dystopian about it, but I can see many more of these things on the way. And a lot of them happen and don't get reported outside of your local news. So stay safe, folks. Also, don't hack your water system. And if you want to give everybody in your global neck of the woods some kind of crazy psychedelic experience, just know this. You probably will not be able to control the dosage. First off, you'll need a ton of it. Just walking through why you shouldn't do this. <laughs> you also won't be able to uh, guess the ripple effects or the consequences because water is like that baby shark song. It goes f***ing everywhere. Do, 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 do. And with that, we're going to uh, pause for a word from our sponsor. We'll return with more strange news. And we're back with more of the strange news you depend on. That's right. I went there. I'm doing the hard-hitting story today about, wait for it, tiny little wrinkly naked baby rat mole things. I'm sorry, mole rats, whatever. They're so creepy, guys. I I, I, know, I don't know. Do you think they're cute? I got to know. Naked I'm not mole an, rats. I'm not an expert in cute. But I think they would <laughs> they would find us uh, <laughs> probably repulsive, too, because we got all this hair. We're her suit. Ben, you are a master diplomat when it comes to these things. That was expert hedging. And I, I commend you on that. But Matt, I'm going to need you to have a hard, a hard opinion on this one, buddy. Um, yeah, they, these things are adorable. My son loves them. <laughs> Whoa. And yeah, I mean, he can go to the zoo and stare at them all day long. They look like Freddy Krueger meets Nosferatu with no hair, and they're perfectly pink, and they have these cartoonish little Peppa Pig noses and weird little salamander fingers. And But here's the thing. they It's a trade-off for these little guys because they may be, you know, uh, monstrosities, tiny monstrosities, uh, admittedly, but they're like nigh on invincible. Uh, they, they live, you know, like I had a gerbil live for like three months, you know, these things for their size and the type of creature they are with their, their analogous, you know, to, to mice or rodents, you know, uh, they live for like 30 years. Um, they, 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 they don't ever see the sun, <laughs> which maybe has something to do with it. Uh, but they also have apparently like, like, um, Wolverine level, like DNA repair, self repair capabilities, um, to the point where. They're actually studied for a lot of things, one of which is potentially learning something about how that DNA repairs itself in an effort to harness it for treating things like cancer. Another thing is they're pretty much blind. Their, eye, their eyes are so small and squinty as to practically not exist. Vestigial, uh, right? That's right. They can barely hear. Um, and that's because their ears can't amplify sound. Um, unlike other mammals, they have this very strange outer hair cells that don't amplify sound. Isn't that weird? All you need to amplify sound is for something to be able to receive vibrations. Um, and apparently this hair does not do that. Um, but this you know, peculiarity makes them interesting candidates to study to help develop treatments for human deafness okay so we got two fascinating naked mole rat uh features superpowers even right off the rip but the latest is this they you know how there's the old joke about like the, the dogs in france you know bark with a french accent or whatever or do you know uh norwegian cats ha have a different meow uh it seems silly right seems utterly absurd but it turns out there might be something to um, questions like this, uh, because a new study has shown that uh, naked mole rats actually have dialects, and that dialect comes directly from their queen. Because, Ben, as you pointed out uh, when we were getting ready to go on today, Matt, you too, uh, they live in colonies, like the fake-looking ones that, that your son is so taken by at the zoo, but they literally live in these underground, subterranean, that's redundant, colonies that are like these, you know, interconnected little kind of cubbies. Um, and the it's, it's very much like a beehive situation, because the queen is the only member of the colony that reproduces. So every single uh, individual in the colony, aside from the queen, obviously, is the offspring of that queen. And the queen is head honcho 
uh, to the max, um, to the point where the queen's vocal peculiarities are mimicked by every other member of that colony. Mm, it's a cult. It's also, a cult. want to point out they're corprophagist. If you want, to, like, they eat their own poop uh, mm. on a regular basis. Well, uh, maybe that's why they live so long, guys. Maybe I'm that's just the putting, secret. Putting that out there. I mean, we if I found have, it. I have heard. This is going to sound gross, no, you guys. No, no, no. Drinking your own pee apparently isn't the worst thing in the world for you. There's some no, like health nuts that are all about it. That's if, not going to kill you. It, well, we're talking like if it immediately leaves your system and then goes back into your system, right? Because the moment pee pee <laughs> hangs out for a minute, it's it's up to no good as far as bacteria and other stuff goes, right? Am I wrong? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Well, far be it <laughs> for us to recommend drinking urine. We just want to give you the latest the latest opinions. Uh yeah the <laughs> consumption of feces in naked mole rats should not be held as an example. Uh, or an aspirational goal for humans. Uh, they're you social. They they are tremendously different from oh. most other mammals. Can I tell you guys just a quick story? <laughs> so is it about so drinking my, your own pee? No, I have, I, have a be- I have a beautiful, amazing dog named Penny, and mm. she is a very temperamental eater. And you know, we take great pains not to give her human food, but one thing we have to do is give her these little treats, sprinkle it on her food, so that she'll find them palatable. Because she, like the mole rat, is a queen, uh, and for some reason. The other day, we gave her a large treat that's like, I don't know, I, I, it was a yak milk or something weird like that. It was way too expensive, and it was it was like a celebration for her. But she <clears throat> ate it over the course of a day or so. And then I took her outside, and I've never seen her do this. Took a nice big old dump and just took a big old bite Ooh. right after and mm-hmm. it was because it was very reminiscent, and I'm sure smelled like that treat that she just devoured. Oh, wow. God. Wow. Oh. You ever well, tried to brush a dog's teeth? Matt. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. That is uh, grosser than gross, as, as the kids once said. Uh, I, I want to really quickly circle back. Yeah. Definitely not good for you to drink your own pee. Uh, that was, it, was, it was considered like a folk remedy. Uh, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of kind of like old, you know, wives' tale type situations and sure. holistic remedies from the past uh, that involved drinking your own pee. And that specifically was largely because it was just like, a readily available fluid um, mm. uh, and definitely you know what your pee is doing is removing salts and contaminants from your body so to turn around and drink that back in while sure it is sterile and it's not going to like get you sick um, it's definitely you shouldn't be reintroducing those things back but yeah. enough about <laughs> drinking pee and eating poop um, <laughs> which mole rats do that's where we that's how we got here guys True. that's, how we got here. that's um, the way of the day that's, that's the word corporal fa- I would have, when you said that initially Ben I thought you were saying corporal fascists and I'm like <laughs> that is a fascinating uh, concept that's a and weird I take know. I want to weird know direction to take that in it would be. It would be. Um, but it's true. These vocal intonations are surprisingly uniform within these various colonies. And the study uh, comes from Alison Barker at the Max Delbruck Center for Molecular Medicine in Germany. Along with her colleagues, she studied 36,000 greeting calls because they have these little little yelps, these little chirps uh, from 166 individual uh, naked mole rats in seven different colonies that were raised in labs, probably similar situation to those cubbies at the Atlanta Zoo. Um, and these were raised in labs in Germany and South Africa. Um, and once they were able to kind of separate these out and identify the uh, the different elements of the chirps, uh, things like pitch frequency, duration, um, pitch. Uh, they were able to train an, an algorithm, like using machine learning, uh, to recognize the individuals within the colony and associate them with the actual uh, individual mole rat, but also the uh, features, the various cadences of the chirps were super predictive depending on which colony the animals belong to, which is a lot like the French meow cat and the, you know, the Norwegian dog bark. 
again, not I'm joking, but it's, it's it, there could be right. Like, I mean, it, it, obviously, there's some internalization going on in with these creatures of their surrounding sonic kind of environment, and they're using that to uh, to to generate a slightly different type of chirp. I first heard about this on NPR, and they played some audio clips of these, and you know, to the uh, the naked ear <laughs> there it is. of the human, uh, we would not be able to tell the difference. Um, it, that's mm. why it requires machine learning, because it's literally doing deeper listening, um, honing in on things, uh, frequencies that are either out of our own hearing range or just nuances and subtleties that we'd never be able to pick up on. Um, in another experiment, the naked mole rats uh, also were much more responsive when they heard recordings of their own dialect. Uh, compared to to others from other colonies. So this uh, suggested, according to um, this New Scientist article uh, about the study, that uh, this is uh, how they communicate with each other in terms of a call and response, like a dolphin situation. Although that's more like echolocation, but it still is like, you know, sound being transmitted and then returned. Uh, So that's how they would kind of communicate and recognize members of their own colonies in case they maybe got separated or maybe, you know, presumably some of these different colonies exist in somewhat close proximity to one another. Um, Mm -hmm. The animals also were quick to respond to these uh, manufactured chirp sounds uh, that shared the most features with the dialect that they were used to, um, but still distinct from other members of the community's call. So they were able to kind of like manufacture, you know, from whole AI cloth, new chirps that just, took into account a few of those little parameters, but weren't actually, you know, real. Uh, and they, the ones that had the most recognizable features, that's the one that they would typically respond to. You got to wonder, mm. you know, it's, it's funny because I think, I hope that I'm not the only person who's run into this before, but have you ever been in a place where people don't speak your native language and you try to make friends with an animal mm. and then you realize, <laughs> oh crap, this this dog or raven doesn't speak English at all. I'm just I'm just blathering at it. Uh, it's it's weird because animals, especially animals of a higher intelligence, can recognize parts of human speech, uh, but it is somewhat I, I, not every animal will have an accent. They have to be able to communicate first. And I I would be interested to know whether there is a correlation between the naked mole rat's extraordinary lifespan, which is like over 30, almost unheard of for rodents. Actually, they're the longest living rodents we know of. I wonder if having that time to be alive allows for the propagation and refinement and growth of this regional or colony-wide accent. I mean, what do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, well, I also wonder how much the the queen scenario plays into it. Oh, dude, hugely. Because there's an amazing detail that I left out. Once the queen dies, the Mm. accents become much more disparate. They'd be like, they, they oh. sort of start to become more unique. They're clearly very, very beholden to that queen and uh, and mimicking her exclusively. And then I guess, you know, the mimicry probably takes, you know, once it starts, it kind of like spreads. But yeah, mm. once the queen dies, uh, all bets are kind of off. And they're well, cold blooded, literally. They're literally mm-hmm. cold blooded mammals. Well, it makes me wonder about a bit of a chicken and egg scenario here, mm. though not really. But when you imagine the first brood that a queen outputs, uh, when, when, when the first crew arrives from the queen, right, Ooh. the first litter, um, I imagine that that immediate exposure in the sounds the queen is making, that's the only sound you're, you're experiencing. That's really one of the only senses you're dealing with besides the touch of moving around within this colony Mm-hmm. Uh, as the, if you imagine yourself as one of these naked mole rats and that b- first brood experiences that responds to that same sound that you're hearing, you, you know, make it again, mimic it. Then the next brood comes and you hear an entire colony making that same sound. And the queen, the mother, the life giver mm-hmm. is also making that sound. I'm assuming since they're mammals, there's some kind of feeding that occurs Mm -hmm. uh, directly from the queen, from the mother. Um, I'm assuming, I don't know that that's true, but whatever, whatever that looks like, I do not want to see it go down. (laughs) Naked mole rats are basically 
living out that formerly banned X-Files episode home. Mm -hmm. uh, we, oh. we don't have to go into detail, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And they also They're, look a lot like that weird sewer dweller with the suction mm -hmm. mouth guy. They kind of mm -hmm. look like tapeworm guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, it's fascinating because, you know, like you said earlier, Noel, uh, this amazing, distinct creature holds such potential for human beings, for all other mammals. Imagine being able to, like, it, it's a trade-off, right? I think we called it a monkey paws situation either before we rolled or, or sometime earlier. It, it's a trade-off. Would you, would you live looking like a human version of a naked mole rat, uh, knowing that you would be essentially immune to cancer, you would not suffer pain from inflammation, um, and you would live a very long time. Would you do that? Would you rather be alive for like more than a century and ugly as sin, no judgment, blind and deaf, mm -hmm. living in darkness? Mm -hmm. I think that's a no Never. brainer. I don't know. That's yeah. just me. Or would you rather be a naked mole rat sized human that <laughs> <laughs> lives in a colony with a queen <laughs> and you can only make really one utterance? Uh, that is a mimicry of of the queen. What does it uh, sound like, Noel? Can you do it, a... It's kind of a chirp. Why don't we hear one? Okay. What rough chirp slouches toward Bethlehem to be born? That's that's the opposite of intimidating. I think it, that's the thing. It's 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 a cute kind of mouse like little squeak, and then you see what that's coming from. And, and uh, Doc mentioned before we got going too. Uh, same as me, honestly. Uh, my first exposure to these things was in the, the Fallout series of video games, but in that series, they're like the size of a large dog. Uh, mm -hmm. But they otherwise look exactly the same because there was nothing these video game designers could have added to make them look more like a post-apocalyptic or terrifying. Um, but yeah, no thank you. Talk okay, I got another one for you, uh, Noel. What's scarier? One giant mole rat like that size uh, coming at you or a thousand little tiny mole rats just slowly crawling towards you? Thousand. Uh, I know you didn't ask me, but a thousand, <laughs> definitely. I think a thousand. You can run from one. You can dodge one. You mm -hmm. know, if, if it's like a sentient kind of just like moving tide of mole rats, like those little baby dinosaurs in Jurassic Park 3. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Or maybe it was the, the little leaper ones. Yeah, they look real cute. Uh, but then they like swarm all over you and pick your pick the, the meat off your bones while you're still mm -hmm. alive. Do you think these guys would, what do you think they would do, guys, if they were to swarm you? Do you think they have a taste for human flesh? No, they're herbivores. Really? And, and poop eaters. Mm. Uh, what but, if we uh, were covered in poop? <laughs> well, then, you know, it's like my, uh, what one of my old instructors used to say, what's the first thing you do if you wake up in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere? Uh, the first thing you do is ask yourself how you got in that situation. You know what I mean? If the if the three of us are covered in poop, and there's a swarm of like a tidal wave of naked mole rats rolling towards us. That's the moment I think where the video pauses and you hear the VO saying, "You're probably get, wondering yeah. how we got here." Yeah. <laughs> also, might be time to reassess some life decisions at that point. Mm. Or, uh, yeah, no, I agree. And you're right. It, it is the the quintessential Walter White with no pants on, pointing a gun in the direction of blaring police sirens coming towards him. Only mm. much more mm. terrifying and poop covered. Yeah. Uh, by the way, sorry. I, I we we dropped a line about tiny little dinosaurs, and my mouth uttered coelacanths. I what I meant talking. to say, what I meant to say with was comsignathus. Mm -hmm. Comsignathus. They call them compies. I, I remember that. Sorry about that, there everybody. No, what is no, a coelacanth? A That's an old fish. Uh, is is a proof? This is amazing. Okay, a coelacanth <laughs> is a very very. Um, I know I'm I, I like I don't understand a lot of social signals. I don't understand what is or isn't cute. But uh, coelacanths are generally considered ugly trash fish. They are, however, an example of a cryptid that was redis rediscovered whoosh, whoosh, not too long ago. Uh, they were thought to be uh, extinct for millions of years until uh, some Europeans in on the African continent heard stories about what sounded to them like this extinct fish 
And the locals said, no, you guys didn't discover anything. We told you. This fish is everywhere. It's it's a trash fish. No one likes it. <laughs> and they were like, we have rediscovered the silicons. <laughs> so anyway, it's a real cryptid is the point. Yeah, so I think we, cool. we, exactly. We talked about our cryptid episode. And I think this is the one that has a funky looking fin on the bottom that looks like it might be ready to become a, a leg of some sort. In the near evolutionary future, <laughs> although it never really made it. Um, that's okay. Don't give up yet. <laughs> you know, go see like that. And you know what, man? Go naked mole rats. Mm-hmm. I don't want one as a pet. Uh, I don't think you can get just one. They're very much the Pringles of mammals. Um, mm. Like sugar gliders, right? They have to come in pairs at least. But uh, I'm I'm glad they're here. I hope that I hope we get something for this species from the research. And I hope that these... Uh, I hope these not particularly beautiful animals live uh, a, a long, long time. I don't want them to expand. I think they're good where they are. Agreed. If that makes sense. Agreed. Agreed. Can you imagine if they like took the place of just your common household, you know, mouse? That'd be a much scarier situation if you saw one of those crawling out of your walls. <laughs> <laughs> just going. <laughs> Chirping at you. Okay, I've had about enough of this. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be back with more strange news. Hello, welcome back to the show. And we've reached the point in our episode where we're going to give you nightmares if you have a significant other, especially if you sleep next to one on a nightly basis. Here we go. More nightmares uh, than the naked mole rats, man? That's a tall uh, order. Mm, Well, I mean, see if you can do some kind of overlay with the two stories and really, really just jumpstart your your night sweats. I'm there. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, pulling from a New York Times article that was released on February 5th, it is an update to an ongoing story. And here is the headline. NYPD officer accused in plot to kill husband will plead guilty. Kind of spoiling... The, the ending here a little bit. It's not quite the ending, but the reason why we're even talking about it is because that, that piece of news came out very recently, but the full story and the thing that I really want to talk about today goes back way in, I think 2019. So we're going to jump back from that headline to 2019, tell you the story about this police officer who had some weird stuff go on in her life. And, uh, It all started playing out in the news. Let's begin here. So there's a husband and a wife. Okay, if you're watching the video, I'm giving you some helpful visuals here. Uh, The husband and and wife have a child. And they are going through a divorce. Pretty messy. Dealing a lot with, you know, who gets gets to uh, have custody of this child. And... I, I don't know the full story of the ex-husband and what his you know situation is as far as relationship goes, but we do know and can confirm through reporting and through an investigation that the ex-wife had a boyfriend, Ooh. and the boyfriend it was then on and off again the situation, and he had a bit of a criminal past that where he had been to court several times and accused of many a thing. He was known, this guy was known to hang out with a couple of people from the Sopranos, like the actual Sopranos cast. Ooh, which ones? <laughs> um, I'll Big have fan. to. Big fan. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and I'm getting a lot of this information about him, the boyfriend. His name's John Deruba. Uh, getting it from the New York Post. Not the best place, but nobody's really talking about him much in oh, the investigation John. and reporting. Oh, you know John. You know How John. Is, how's John doing? He's doing all right. He's allegedly connected to the Gaudi people, at least according to him, mm-hmm. and the Gambino uh, crime family. Wait, wait, wait. So, so the cast of, I'm sorry, I'm hung up with the Sopranos. I <laughs> so the cast of the Sopranos are hanging out with a dude who's aligned with the Gotti family. There's no, cause this can't be a coincidence. They're doing it just to get like, I mean, but clearly this is way after the end of the show. What, what's going on here? I, allegedly this, this okay. is all, this is all just to paint the picture of this other person with whom the police officer was involved. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, just some weird thing. Not, nobody knows. I don't know how that involvement occurred, what it to what extent it was, but we know that at some point, 
because of likely, at least, the custody battle. We do know that this police officer, her name is Valerie Cincinnelli. Mm-hmm. And of course, she is accused of these crimes. She is not uh, fully gone to trial. She is, again, as we said at the top, going to plead guilty, at least according to her attorney. She's accused of hiring a hitman, or at least talking to her boyfriend, that guy, John DeRubio, DeRubo, about hiring a hitman to kill the ex-husband. And we know this because this guy who's allegedly connected to some crime family, who was the boyfriend of this police officer, flipped on her and started recording conversations. Wow. And, and <laughs> then uh, told her that, yeah, I know somebody who can, who could do this for you. It'll take $7,000. Mm-hmm. That's uh, a steal. Then somehow, and this is really confusing to me in the reporting does not clear this up. Somehow it was going to be $7,000 to kill both her ex-husband and this boyfriend's teenage daughter. Ooh, that's too so cool. the guy who's arranging it, his teenage daughter, I don't understand it. Good luck to you as you read some pieces in New York times and CBS and all over the place. It's confusing. It doesn't make sense well, I mean, to me. Seven grand for two. I mean, again, again, sorry, sorry, not to get hung up, but in in the '90s on The Sopranos, you'd get ten grand for one. It depends on the person, really, too. Like I how easy that's are true. they get? Are are they to get to? Also, if they are, if they are running an op on this person, mm. then they they want to have they want to have a price point that incentivizes them to agree to it right well, and, you so, know and, and oftentimes they want someone that's unconnected uh they that they wouldn't recognize somebody from a different mm. part of town or, or a different state mm. even you know so there's all kinds of calculations it's true transport catering you know craft services insurance. yeah yeah mm-hmm. so matt astute listeners noticed surely that you said uh this nypd officer will plead uh guilty but here's the question. What is this officer pleading guilty to? Exactly? Uh, we we do not know that, that. That's why it's not really news. It's just uh, this is an excuse to talk about this story, which is utterly fascinating to me and terrifying to me for a lot of reasons. I got to give you a couple more details, though, before you, we jump into that. Okay. We don't we don't know what she's pleading guilty to because she's. Uh, she's being accused of several things, uh, two federal murder for hire charges, two counts of obstruction of justice. Um, and she had previously s- pled not guilty to, to all of these charges. So that seven grand, the alleged seven grand that was going to be paid. We know that this officer took that money out of an account and gave it to the boyfriend. The boyfriend procured a little of over six thousand nine hundred something dollars in gold coins with that cash, because allegedly, according to him, this is the only way the hitman would be paid. It's the <laughs> currency the the old guy took, whoever it was going to be. Um, and then this guy flipped, was recording conversations. The FBI and local police there, they actually approached the ex husband. And they said, like, imagine this. Imagine someone coming to your door, whether whether you're a husband, you're a wife, you're a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, it doesn't matter. Imagine the FBI showing up your door and saying, hey, your significant other has put a hit out on you. Um, and this person has been planning to kill you all winter. And we've actually been recording conversations and working with the person that she was trying to contract. We have an FBI officer now who is acting and communicating with her as the hitman. What we need to do now is take you down to this uh, undisclosed location. We're going to put you in the car. We're going to put a bunch of glass around you and some fake blood and make it look like you've been killed and that the hitman took a picture of you. We're going to send that picture to your ex-wife and like through this hitman's phone number and then convince her that you're dead in order to get her to communicate with her boyfriend and try and cover her tracks so we can prove that she knew this was happening, that she was planning to do this, and she's the one who set it up. And that's exactly what they did. Mm. Like, imagine that scenario. (sighs) 
So you say this will terrify people with a significant other that they sit next to often. Uh, However, from what I understand, the uh, X and Cincinnati were in the middle of a quite an acrimonious divorce, right? This is true. This is true. I think what it mostly speaks to, is, at least in a lot of the reporting in the ensuing investigation, was that uh, this person, Valerie, was seen as such a good, upstanding person, an amazing police officer, a kind person to children. She worked directly with children. Ooh. She, you know, she was just viewed as a paragon, really. And then she also had this dark side within her to do something like this. Now, we don't know all the circumstances in their relationship, right? We don't know what kind of beef there was between them. We There are so many unanswered questions here. And we have to remind everyone that Valerie Cincinnati is still not guilty until she, you know, until whatever occurs within the court system. Um, so even though she is allegedly pleading guilty according to her turn her attorneys to something Um, yeah to something who knows and we know that since the boyfriend that we mentioned up top there that may have those mob ties was a bit of an unscrupulous character uh who knows what really happened (laughs) and what kind of you know right i mean yeah the guy the guy's working directly with the fbi i i don't know he was in court not long ago because he allegedly was in a vehicle with somebody And this person had a large diamond ring. And according to the the transcripts, or at least the reporting that came from that trial, uh, (laughs) the boyfriend made mention of the weapon, the gun that he had on him, and about how, oh, no, the Gotti family, we'll we'll pay you tomorrow. We'll pay you tomorrow. You got to get out of the car. Have a gun. Get out of the car. Leave the Uh, leave the diamonds. (laughs) And then just left. And then just left. And that was it. At least that's what what he's accused of doing. Um, But I don't know. (laughs) Can I (laughs) can can I give us a a quote? I'd love to share a quote from this this man. Uh, In so Cincinnati was arrested in 2019, I believe. Originally, yes, correct. Okay, so uh, the news that we have is that she is pleading guilty. Uh, So. This guy says about his on off again paramour, you know, you think you're in love with someone, but it's not what you think. You try so hard to overlook stuff, hmm. but you just can't. That's his, <laughs> that's his statement to the media. Um, I think there's something fishy here, Matt. No, I think, I think a bargain was struck. Well, yeah, the um, Valerie's, attorney has made several statements that you can you can watch right now in videos uh statements outside of a courthouse you know following or preceding hearings where he is state he stated that the character of this boyfriend is going to be the largest thing in question and the the biggest thing that's explored within the trial itself or if you know if it is in fact a full trial um mm, i don't know i'm fascinated by this stuff mm-hmm. or just what what do you what do you think noel what do you think, Ben? Where, what do we do with something like this when you... <laughs> what, what do we do with something we like this? We just kind of keep paying attention. I don't know, man. Like, it seems yeah. like an incomplete... It seems this, the story is not fully told yet. Yeah, you also, you also, first off, look at the web of connected entities and individuals. I love that you point out we have... I've said it before. Every relationship is a foreign country basically. And if you are trying to understand two people's relationship, especially if it's a romantic one, you are always going to be an outsider. So we have no idea what happened uh, that led to this this very messed up divorce and that led to this attempted assassination. Second thing, Lake City quiet pills. Go mm. for the pros. You know what I mean? Don't take your phone with you. Don't, don't, I, I'm not condoning this at all. I'm just saying that if it's such a cliche, right? If it appears to be too good to be true, then it probably is. If you are ever, for some reason, God forbid, in a situation where you're like, wow, just 7,000 to kill somebody, that's that's, a, that's actually kind of a great deal, uh, then that probably means you're being set up. You know what I mean? Like, that, I, I think... The days of ordering um, ordering professional operations through things like Soldier of Fortune magazine are long gone. We are in a surveillance state. 
uh, not for nothing did that hitman want to have payment in gold. But also, how much can you trust the FBI? They straight up manufactured some terrorists not too long ago. And we, we know this. It's yeah. proven. Yeah. Uh, eh, okay. Well, I hope the kids are okay. Yes. Because she, she has two children outside of that relationship. And yeah, uh, they, they do have a, a child together. So hopefully that kid makes it out all right, no matter what happens here. All right. Well, I, I think that's all for this one, guys. Strange news indeed uh, to the tune of Strange Days Indeed for anybody singing along at home. <laughs> uh, this is our show. Uh, we hope this show finds you healthy. Uh, and doing well. Uh, we'd love to hear from you folks. Uh, what what do you think are some common mistakes people make when they are trying to hire an assassin? Uh, we did also, by the way, uh, we did have uh, some, some people in the assassination or targeted killing community reach out to us uh, regarding our History of Assassins episode. And we're currently, as we speak, working out how and if uh, we will talk to them possibly on air. So no promises, but also no spoilers. Uh, would you live forever if it meant that you look like a naked mole rat? Would you make that trade off? I don't know. I don't know. That's I'm still on the fence because of how they look and, <laughs> and the poop eating. Uh, and then lastly, how easy do you think it is to hack infrastructure? And do you have any experience with it? Let us know. We try to make it easy to find us on the internet. That's right. You can reach us on Facebook and Instagram. We are Conspiracy Stuff and Conspiracy Stuff Show. You can also join our Facebook group. Here's where it gets crazy. And hey, while you're on the internet, why not drop us a review on your podcatcher of choice, preferably to help out the show, uh, Apple Podcasts, um, because it helps us rank and it helps people discover the show. Uh, and it makes us feel good in our little heart of hearts. That is correct. And if you don't want to do that stuff, hey, you still want to say something? You want to actually say something? You can give us a call. Our number is 1-833-STDWYTK. You can leave us a message. We would love it if you keep it brief, succinct. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Ben has mentioned before, if you write down a couple bullet points before you call in, it's really great. Just that way you make sure you hit everything and then you can get out of there. That makes it easier for us to put it on air and for us to get through all the messages. So we really do appreciate that. Let us know if you don't want us to use your name or your voice on the air, please. And if none of that white breaks your traffic lights, none of that quite poisons your water, there is one other way that you can reach us regardless of the time, the place, or the day. That is our good old-fashioned email address where we are. Conspiracy at iHeartRadio.com Stuff They Don't Want You to Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.